welcome to my channel. I'm Paula Hope, the Caravan Hooker. The million dollar question, how do I price or cost my finished crochet projects? Are you like me? Have you finished a project? Someone has said, oh I love that, can I buy it? How much is it? And you're in a mad flap in your head thinking, I have no idea, I have no idea, I have no idea. How long did it take me? How much did it cost me? What's a realistic price? What will they want to pay? Do they really think it's worth it? it? Doesn't have to be that hard. I've got a simple strategy that I was shown and I've been using it now for over a year and I've found it effective. My finished goods, which I don't do a lot of, but they have been selling. My main focus is, of course, my designs and my digital patterns. But here in the caravan, every now and then, I open up my shop and the caravan hooker will have a supply of goods and I just pop them on our bed, set them up on a display, and ladies and guys will pop over and we'll have a look. So let's go through some simple things. Now, there's been a lot of discussion on social media lately around maybe taking timings or working out what things, how long things take to make in order to keep a track of things and ultimately should you want to price. So I thought I'd step in and just make this video and hopefully it'll help someone out there, especially at this time of the year because I know many of us are making goods, have made a stash of goods, ready for the Christmas and holiday markets in the hope that we can sell some of our beautiful products and um, be rewarded for the time and effort that we've put in and make a bit of money that'll help our households and our Christmas spending or holidays that are coming up. So let's get going. All right, the first thing often people do is they think they need to charge per the hour. Right, well, let's just break that down and think about it. I'm a fairly experienced crocheter and I think I crochet at a medium to fast pace. So if I had, say for example, my granddaughter who is learning crochet or someone in a beginner stage of crocheting sitting next to me and we both decided to make the same project. So we might be making these lovely fine wool eyelet fingerless gloves. Now, the length of time it will, make, it will take me to do them, both reading the pattern, understanding it and creating them, to my granddaughter or beginner crocheter will be very different. <laughs> Were you busy? That is my husband, who promised he would stop and listen before he barged in Sorry. on my filming. Right, so as I was saying, would you like to sit down and get yourself set up again? So, if we go on an hourly rate, just think about that. I might take two hours to make a set of gloves, and a beginner crocheter may take four hours. So why should the product be priced at a much higher rate because it took longer for the beginner and therefore the customer have to pay a far higher rate than for the experienced crocheter who was able to whiz them up a lot faster. So timing is really difficult if you're going to charge per the hour. The other part of it is that if you break down your project and work out what you sold it for and how long it took you, you're inevitably going to become highly discouraged and think, I'm only earning $2 an hour, it's not worth it. And I guess you've got to weigh up why you make things to sell, uh, what the purpose of it is. Now for the majority of us, we're doing our crochet because we absolutely love it. It's a passion, it's an art, it's something that gives us great fulfillment. These are not mass produced, so these are one-off, unique, beautiful quality items that you are putting your heart and soul in and creating. So let's, hourly rate charging, nah, isn't going to work. 
let's look at another option which I think is far better and works across all projects because it basically works on the amount of yarn that goes into your project. So if you're doing a really large uh, crochet blanket afghan you're going to have a lot more yards or meters of yarn that goes into it. So therefore, logically, it's going to take longer, yes, to make it. But we're not going to go on the hourly time because your skill, my skill, my speed, your speed will vary. And it really is the job of uh, the crocheter who wants to become proficient to put the time in to hone the skill, to improve your speed. And there are different things you can do in order to improve on that level. Right, so let's look at a different aspect of it. Okay, let's move on to what I'm suggesting here. Using your yardage, your meterage, the amount of yarn going into your project as your base charging system. So how do we do that? What we're gonna do is we're going to set up a pricing system based on your meter or yard you crochet. So you might want to start at, for example, you're working on a basic pattern, basic stitches, and so therefore your basic rate could be 10 cents per yard or meter. Now you may have a different currency and so therefore you'll want to adjust it, whether it's pesos or however you want to work it. So if I've started off at a 10 cents per meter or per yard rate then I move up into 12 cents now 12 cents is where there might be a little bit more difficulty in the pattern or maybe the wool the yarn might be difficult to handle like say um, a plushy or a velour type wool particularly if you have to unpick it you might just find it a little bit more difficult to work with now I go right up to 15 or 20 cents per meter or yard on my own original designs. Now the reason I do that, you might be thinking, but hang on a minute, you would know those patterns. You would know probably be able to do them without even looking. And yes, you're right, but they are my original designs and this is the way I can create a royalty. Just like when you listen to music or it's played on a radio station, they're royalty fees. So it's the same sort of concept. So let's, just to help you get your head around this, I've created a couple of examples of products that I have patterns for and how I have priced the physical products when I've sold them. So let's start with example one. We'll be looking at the Best Ever Beanie, which is one of my popular patterns using a 12 ply. And in this case, we used a Motivera 12 ply yarn purchased from Spotlight. There was 74 meters on a 50 gram ball at a cost of $10 a ball. And I used two and a half balls or into the third ball, 185 meters in total. Now I was charging at 15 cents per meter. So 15 times 185 gives us the labor charge of two seven seventy five twenty seven dollars seventy five now let's add in the yarn cost because we went into the third ball i do charge the three balls at ten dollars that's an additional thirty dollars to the cost any additional costs marketing or other parts that may need to be added in in this case it was at the pom pom or fom fom the fur pom pom five dollars and so i had a total cost of 62.75 as a base for me to work from. Now example two we'll look at the fine wool eyelet gloves which again is my own personal design and with these I was able to get a pair out of a, a four ply ball, a 50 gram ball with 165 meters just one ball was needed at a cost of nine dollars a ball. So one ball 165 meters I'm going to times that by my labor rate at 15 cents per meter. So 115, sorry, 15 cents by 165 gives us a labor charge of 24.75. And then we'll add in the cost of the yarn. So one ball at $9 per ball. And we add that to our labor charge, giving us a 
$33.75. Okay, so let's talk about how you can give a perceived increased value to your product by using branding and marketing. So I'm just going to let you watch a small little clip that I recorded earlier showing you how I use my particular branding and marketing to just give a more professional looking product which supports then the prices I sell my goods for. Okay, so let's just have a look at a basic example of what I'm talking about. Here I have my finished C2C fine eyelet cowl or head warmer and I've sold it so now i need to get it ready or i might be wanting to display it at a market now it can look nice folded like this and maybe i'd put it into one of these cellophane bags and sit it on a table and hope that it looks enticing enough for someone to want to buy it now the price tag on this in New Zealand dollars for the cost of the wool in using the example of my pricing um, calculation would sit between somewhere around the $40 to $50, which might seem expensive just looking at a product like this. Let's change it up and see how using a little bit of simple marketing and branding can add a perception of value to your goods and therefore support your pricing. So here I have a cowl, same cowl but just without the knot through the middle. I've folded it up and I've popped this wee wooden uh, emblem here. Now I just buy these at the craft shop. You can get butterflies and leaves and different things. On the back, so threaded through here, I then have got these simple little cards. Now again, I buy these from a local stationer's and they're cheap for a pack of um, 10 or 20 of them. We have a little printer in-house in the caravan and I'm able to print my labels. Now by putting your marketing, your brand, the Caravan Hooker, Crochet Designs Handcrafted in New Zealand, Find us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm encouraging the buyer or the person who receives this as a gift to look up my page and potentially follow, find other gifts or things they might like. Underneath, I just have a little sticker that says the Caravan Hooker designs by Paula Hope, handcrafted quality, beautiful, timeless pieces to treasure made in New Zealand. And then my second card, so my first card is always my branding marketing card, how to find me, what it is I do, I guess kind of like a bit of a tagline on my uh, physical products. Then I have a information card that will tell them what the item is, the size, and also have care instructions. So TCH, the Caravan Hooker original design, it's the fine wall eyelet, cowl, neck warmer or headband. It's in a size medium, natural stretch giving a soft fit and then on the back I have the yarn that was used. 100% Australian merino wool. So straight away they know that there is a quality yarn being used. The care instructions as per the label that came off the yarn. So what this does is just ups completely the look of the item. All right, so now when we pop it in the bag, my label sitting at the back. Now we'll just make sure we've got our little heart sitting nicely. So on the outside of the package, I then will put another one of my wee labels. So this one just has basic information and I usually just peel this off. Oh, actually it needs to be cut. Hang on, I'll come back. 
Okay, sorry about that. I forgot to just trim uh, the edges off here. So all I'm going to do is just grab the wee label. And I'll just pop that down in the corner of the bag here. Okay, so let's compare a product that has been packaged, has labelling inside, to just a product sitting on a table with maybe one little price tag. Makes a huge, huge difference. And here's an example of what I've done with the gloves. So this is a set that was ordered of my new fine wool eyelet uh, gloves and cowl matching set. And so again, I've popped a little butterfly here just to hold them together. And I've got my labelling here, the caravan hooker. There's two cards again with the information, what the product is, care instructions, and that will sit to the back. And then that will go in a wee bag and be sent to the purchaser. And that makes a lovely, now she's passing it on as a gift, so she'll be able to package it up, wrap it or however she wishes to, and um, it looks really lovely. So those are some tips uh, on cheap ways that you can add some marketing and increase, increase sorry, the value, the perception of value to your product by doing those little touches that just show that your product is quality and has high value. Great, so that wraps it up. Million dollar question, how do I charge or price my finished crochet projects? It's actually not as hard as you were thinking. You can relax. Now, just remember, don't undersell yourself. You've spent hours and hours honing this beautiful skill and you obviously love it and have a passion for it. So if you're going to sell your beautiful handcrafted goods, make sure you price them well. Price them to both reward you, add value to your customer. Your customer will then take away a beautiful treasured piece and look after it. So I hope you found that helpful. That is how you price. That's one option. And um, I'd love to hear your feedback on how you find that. Um, for any of you out there who have not yet quite figured out how to do your pricing. And as always, if you haven't yet subscribed and joined my channel, then why not? Let's hit the subscription button and also your notifications. And thumbs up if you've really appreciated this content and found it useful. And I'd love to have your feedback. If you've got other ideas or use other ways of working out your costing that works for you, then please share it with us down in the comments so that um, others can also look at some other alternatives. This is not the only way to do it. This is the way that I do it and I've found it works for me and I hope it's helpful information for you guys out there. All right, I'll sign out now. Happy crocheting. Paula Hope, The Caravan Hooker.